Good evening, or good afternoon, I guess is probably more appropriate. Good afternoon. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. My name is David Goins. I'm the Director of Music and Worship here, and on behalf of Dr. Phil Hill and Roy Nance and Reverend Tanya Kenner, I want to say welcome. Welcome to our church, and we're so glad that you're here. This is going to be such a great afternoon of music, and I think you're going to be so pleased with what you hear. Dr. John Cummins has been here all week practicing, and I tell you, it's just been spectacular to sit and work and come through and listen to this glorious music. Uh, as someone who uh, is in charge of many worship services on a weekly basis of all varieties, that is me, uh, lead traditional worship and non-traditional worship, and we hear this constant chitter-chatter about the organ and how churches are going away from this and they're getting rid of their organ. I'm here to say, proclaim, that this organ and the organs, are, they're not going anywhere. Yeah, they're not going anywhere. There's a place for the other, for all things, but this is a glorious instrument, historically centuries of great organ music, and it's going to be here for a long time. And thanks to Roy Nance's leadership and a lot of benefactors uh, over the years who have made sure that we have a great instrument in this great sanctuary, this historic sanctuary, we're, uh, we're going to be having some great worship services here. If you look in your program, you get to read a little bit that Roy wrote about all of the the coming about of this event 20 years, 30 years ago, actually, 1978, even more than that, 40 years ago, when this dream started, when Roy first arrived here, and how, that, how we have come to this place today. And it's quite a story, and uh, it's especially Miss um, Emily Gray Jones, who left her estate to basically the, to the music department and allowed for this to, to actually come to fruition. And she started that ball rolling, and uh, it, Roy so talked so highly about her and what she meant to, uh, to this movement to get this organ here. And it's been a great organ since. It's, it's led so many worship services and funerals and weddings, and it's just been a great, great thing for our community and our church body. So what a great time to come and celebrate this beautiful instrument. And we're so glad that you are here. I'm going to ask Dr. Phil. He'll come up here in a second and lead us in a prayer. A, a couple of, of notes. Some of you have asked, I'd like to go inside and see this organ, take a little tour. Uh, Afterwards, we're going to have a reception right outside this door into Gallery Hall. We have a nice art gallery. We're going to get to meet John and uh, talk with him and uh, celebrate with Roy and Karen Nance. Uh, but we will offer, if you want to come take a little short tour, we'll t Roy will take you back there. The, we have a book called The Cask of Amontillado or something about that. There might be a few creatures back there, buried back. But anyway, just joking. I, I jest. I jest. I jest. I jest. But it is, it is a beautiful instrument. We want you to see how it works and uh, see the, the craftsmanship of, craftsmanship of uh, Randall Dyer and his, his fine team. It's just beautiful. So, Dr. Phil, if you don't mind, uh, give us a quick word of blessing. Let's pray together. Wonderful and loving God, what an honor it is to be in this place. And here in this sacred room, Lord, you have established your glory, and it continues. And how honored we are to continue, even in this recital, if you will, a time of worship. And we pray that uh, what we do, our thoughts, our hearts, glorify you in this, in this time. Thank you for the lives that have touched, for the souls that have felt the glory of, of the Lord through the music from this great instrument. And uh, it continues. And for that, we do praise you. And so now, bless us. Uh, bless John Cummins. And uh, we thank you for what is about to take place. And we offer this now in the name of Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. I do want you to note that there will be, uh, at before the, borrow this real quick, Byron, before, three pieces for organ. Before, we, before he plays that piece, we're actually going to sing a hymn, which is printed in your bulletin. That piece, the three pieces for organ, is based upon that hymn, and he would like for us to sing that. During that time, we'll actually take up an offering. This is a free concert, uh, but we want to keep 
programs like this coming. So if you don't mind, we're going to offer a, a love offering at that time, and uh, we'll ask that you give as much as you can, or not at all, but just, just be, uh, be mindful that we will, will do that at that time. And before we start, I want to acknowledge, he's got, he does not want this, but the whole reason we're here today is because of Roy Nance. And I would like to honor him and recognize him. He's shaking his head. He's going to egg my house later. We're neighbors. We're neighbors. But this is just an instrument. That is the, he makes that instrument speak and that leads worship. So, so glad to have him here for his leadership and to our community and our, our church. So without further ado, enough of me talking. Will you please help me welcome Dr. John Cummins.
I thought we'd get the full impact right off the bat and just get it out of the way. Just know that's as loud as she goes, so you don't have to take it and worry about it any louder than that for the rest of the day. <laughs> Thank you all so much for having me for this very special anniversary, 25th year. Thank you, Roy. Thank you, David. Thank you, Phil. Everybody, it's just wonderful to be here. I bring you greetings from North Carolina, and that first piece comes directly from North Carolina, from Winston-Salem, from Wake Forest University, where Dan Locklear is the composer in residence. That piece was commissioned by the Winston-Salem Symphony over 10 years ago, and it has had several different arrangements since then. So you think about that as a symphonic work that, that was transported, uh, it, it, then it became the solo organ um, arrangement. Now it's for trumpet and organ and brass quintet and organ. So it's got lots of different in incarnations. And Dan is a wonderful friend, and he's also a parishioner at my church, so it's great to be around these folks. And we'll get to talk a little bit more and know about another very important Winston-Salem composer in Margaret Sandresky in just a little bit. Um, the next two pieces I'd like to do as a group so that Noah, if you just wait until the end of the Bach for applause at the end, I think you'll understand how they go really well together. Not much of, uh, during Mozart's time, unlike Bach, none of his music was written, there was so little of his music for organ that was written down, and actually this piece was not written to be performed by an organist uh, on an actual solo organ, but it was written for a musical, uh, um, an organ inside a clock. So it's a little player organ, a flute organ inside a, a clock for his you know, wealthy patrons and folks who had such expensive toys. And so these are, this is an arrangement of, of one of the sonatas, or this is a, known as adagio and allegro um, for this musical clock. Three movements there. And then he'll, it ends very quietly, and the G major prelude and fugue, which is so familiar of Bach, I think goes right in after it. So I hope you'll enjoy those together.
that's a whole lot of notes. I got to play something slower for just a minute. <laughs> okay, so Cesar Franck, <laughs> one of the most important um, of the French Romantic um, composers, was at Saint Clotilde in Paris and taught at the Paris Conservatory. And his friend Alexis Chavet was um, very influential with him about introducing him to, to the works of Bach and influencing him highly on the, on the works of Bach. So this piece is very imitative, very, uh, lots of canonical writing. You'll hear this throughout, that things get repeated. Um, but it has also Franck's characteristic, beautiful, melodic structure in it too. So it, this is a fairly new piece in my own repertoire. So I'm glad to share this with you today too.
Before we stand and sing this hymn, I really have to tell you about Margaret Sandresky. She's the queen of the music community in Winston-Salem and rightfully earned that status as she came with her father, or rather her parents, as an only child to Winston-Salem in 1925. She's 97, she's still living, she's still composing. Um, I'm gonna do the Winston-Salem premiere of a piece that she wrote for a new Fisk organ in Southern Pines last year, and she asked me to take her down to hear the premiere of that work, so I'm gonna play it in Winston-Salem in a couple of weeks when I get back home. She's a wonderful woman who studied um, at Salem Academy and at Salem College with her father, Charles Vardell, who was the chair of the music department there. Her grandfather founded Flora McDonald College, which um, is now St. Andrews University in Laurenburg, North Carolina. Her great-grandfather founded the Second Presbyterian Church in Charleston. So she's from a long line of Southern history and she stayed right there and done beautiful things with her heritage all along. Um, my friend Ricky Johnson commissioned this piece for our other mutual friend, Don Armitage, the, inward, the, the little uh, prelude on the inward light. And um, like so many others in the, in the medieval period, the, the theme Lomar Marme has been um, set in, at least in medieval um, times, over 40 times as the theme for different mass settings by important composers, including Dufay and Akagem. Um, so Margaret set this, um, used this tune in her own organ mass, very much in the French classic style and things. I think this is the absolutely dearest movement of it, the Agnus Dei, and it's the, the setting, instead of a, the dance popular folk tune, the bum, 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 is very slow and very beautifully sung out on a four-foot flute with gorgeous harmony underneath. And um, then, uh, her wedding march, um, I don't know if you know enough about Winston-Salem to know that, of course, uh, Reynolds Tobacco made that town over, over 100 years ago. And then Haynes Manufacturing, pantyhose, underwear, all those things. And so um, the, uh, the uh, Gordon and Copey Haynes are a part of that Haynes Manufacturing family. Um, and their daughter, um, Drury, was married at Centenary United Methodist where Margaret was the organist for a period of time and she was asked to write a piece for it. So she wrote this wedding march for the procession and Centenary Methodist seats 1,200 people. So she said, I had to put in plenty of repeats because that's a long aisle and we had to get everybody out of that church. <laughs> so anyway, I, I like these pieces especially because if there are any other organists out there, I think you'll really enjoy them and I want Margaret's music to continue to be played around. Another real treat this week of getting to be here and um, bringing some of Margaret's music here is to meet Patricia Griffin who is here. She's one of Margaret's students. She's, uh, many of you know her and she is recently retired from the piano faculty at Kentucky State University here. So it's been great to get to know. And Margaret said, you've got to meet Patricia Griffin when you get there. So I did and thank you Patricia. <laughs> so now enjoy some of Margaret's music. Let's stand and sing this hymn together before we do.
just entered the season of Pentecost. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing better than to end with the Bene Creator chant, which goes beautifully right after Margaret's wedding march. <laughs>